This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. You know, you mentioned Cornette a minute ago. We haven't talked about him in quite a while. Um, he's not actively working in the wrestling business these days, but still obviously does his podcast and all that jazz. And as part of the regular online conversation, I'm not asking for you to comment on any of that, but are you in any regular communication with him? Y'all were friends for a long, long time, or as, have you guys just sort of drifted apart in more recent years? I think we kind of drifted apart, but nothing intentional, right? Nothing premeditated. It's just schedules and yeah. conversation, uh, are what they are, but no, no, we don't communicate much anymore. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit elusive as is he, uh, you're not a big phone guy, you know, um, what well, you and I, I mean, we're friends, we're pals. And if we're in the same town, we're darn sure going to hang out and probably eat some barbecue and tip a few back. But mm -hmm. outside of that, unless there's something major happening, uh, it's just one of those, see you when I see you type deals. And no. I think, I think a lot of folks in wrestling are that way. I know Eric Bischoff is, and certainly Bruce is. And I think you just, uh, everybody sort of gets used to quote unquote, staying in their lane. That makes sense. Yeah. I, it does make sense. But no, Cornette and I are not adversaries. We're not enemies. We do not agree on a lot of uh, philosophical topics regarding pro wrestling presentation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Corny's kind of the, uh, the, uh, Kentucky fried Howard Stern. <laughs> what a description. And, uh, and he's, uh, you know, he knows his, like you said, he, he knows what lane he belongs in and he's really good at it. Uh, and, but he is controversial. I think for a reason, he doesn't have a major platform. He doesn't have a weekly television show to, to promote his stuff. I think he's, he's, he tries to, uh, attract attention. Nothing wrong with that. You and I do it. We try to attract attention on your, all your, you know, your course. three, th your 3000 podcasts you do each week. No, listen, uh, he's, he's got it figured out. I mean, he has yeah. his fan base. He, he obviously has a very successful show. And I know that sometimes that's not uh, too complimentary to everything that it's happening for your company. And which is why I said, Oh, we don't have to talk about that. I was just curious in terms of no. pal to pal. It's one of those. See when I see a deal, I, I still consider corny a friend. Yeah. Uh, and the frequency of phone conversations doesn't to judge the, the level of friendship. So, uh, you know, I've known him for over 30 years and he ain't changed. You know, a guy corn is, he's always been that way. He just now has a better platform to get the word out. He's always been controversial. He's always been opinionated, high strung, and, but it's also those, some of those qualities are also what made him, uh, arguably, uh, the best manager ever. Now, are, are there other guys? Well, how about Gary Hart? Well, you said Gary, Hart. how about this guy? I'm not knocking any of those guys. Right but to have a list of greatest managers of all time and, and omit Cornette because of his political views is ignorant. So, uh, I, you know, we don't talk much. Uh, I used to see him more when we would go to, uh, be booked to the same conventions or, you know, those, those type things I saw online at Facebook this week, how many people were at, uh, that gathering in Charlotte. I wish it had been this week because I got to see a lot of old friends Yeah, and, then, uh, and they would all ask for comps, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I, I see, I saw him at events like that and always enjoyed the hell out of it. I find him entertaining. I don't have to agree with him philosophically to find him entertaining. And so I'm open-minded enough. He's not going to change my mind on a lot of things. So what? Yeah. What does that mean? It means we have a difference of opinion. That's all. Yeah. So no, I, I don't keep in contact with corny as much as I'd like to. And we're all going to say the same thing, Conrad going forward in our lifetime. I wish I had stayed in closer contact with him because you wake up some morning and one of your buddies is gone and here in wrestling, you know, uh, it, it's, we have a small fraternity. So you wonder about. When you see a guy, is that the last time you're going to see a guy? And I don't want to be that, that person. I don't want to be that person. I want to uh, somehow or another, we, I got to figure out how to 
do a better job of managing my friendships and staying in contact. If nothing else, it's a text message, something where you let them know you're, you're thinking about them. But I will tell you some of my most, uh, entertaining conversations I've ever had were Cornette. Of course. He's just entertaining as hell. So, uh, but I, I wish things were different and that he was, I think he has so much to offer to a, any wrestling company, but he's just challenging to work with. He, 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 he needs to call the plays and he, you know, he's just, uh, that's just him. So I have great respect for corny. Don't agree with a lot of the stuff he says, but I know that he's paid his dues and he became as good as anybody in wrestling in his field. And that's a great accomplishment. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, unfortunately there's too many fans out there who, who can't respect someone's opinion, you know, just because you don't agree, doesn't mean you can't respect his approach and experience. And if nothing else, he certainly earned that from all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if it's a matter of how much save with Conrad.com. Here's one from Ted, the hillbilly heel. He wants to know, were there major differences between mid South and Jim Crockett promotions that you noticed when you first came in? Well, yeah, there were some differences, you know, um, uh, Jimmy was very willing to acquiesce to talents needs, maybe more than cowboy. If the, if the talents in mid South or UWF had a idea and cowboy liked it, then they went with it. He did that a lot, but, uh, Jimmy was very amenable, uh, or more often, more often than not that great conversation that you had with Jimmy, I think indicated that. He may have given dusty, he may have given dusty too much, uh, autonomy and, uh, even against the advice of some of this, like your, your father-in-law, Yeah, everybody had a different philosophical opinion. I don't know who's right. Who's wrong. It doesn't matter now. Irrelevant. Uh, dusty's gone. God bless him. And Jimmy's gone. God bless him. But I think there was a little bit of difference just in the management structure. Cowboy was a very black and white, straightforward guy. And, uh, he was like a Vince Lombardi, no bullshit. And you're going to run his plays. If you have a better play, you can convince, convince him that that play will score and contribute to the success of the team. He'll go with it, but you can't just come in and say, I don't want to work with him anymore. Well, who do you want to work with? I don't know. I just want to work with him. So you're a problem solver, a problem identifier. You're not a problem solver. And it seemed like Jimmy was more of the guy that would allow would acquiesce, even though he may not have wanted to do it in his own mindset. So there's a little bit of difference there, but fundamentally, as far as the physicality and the toughness, et cetera, et cetera, uh, then, you know, then, then it, then it works out, it would work out, but, uh, but that was a big difference. I think at the top, Bill never had a booker. That was as strong a booker as Jimmy had with dusty dusty had a lot of stroke and he lobbied for that. He positioned himself for that. That's the way dusty felt comfortable booking. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that's his philosophy. Yeah. So, uh, but other than that, you know, in ring stuff, you had a lot of, a lot of old school guys that, that love to work hard, love to work physical, tell believable stories. So I think, uh, comparing those two things, which are very important, uh, we are a lot alike. Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.